Hello again everyone and welcome back to my channel. And what I want to do today is talk about CentOS. It's just the unescapable topic right now. Um, it's a very important topic. It needs to be covered and I'm going to cover it. I'm going to give you guys my opinion because I know you guys are curious how I feel about the news. And that's going to be the topic of today's video. Specifically, I'm going to talk about how this news with CentOS actually um, just proves to me that we need a shift in mindset. Not with the companies. Yes, they do need a shift in mindset, let's be honest. But um, companies are going to do what companies do. They're, they're not going to shift anything. Um, let's, let's just be fair. But we, you know, we need to actually change our mindset. Us Linux administrators, Linux fans, it's our mindset that needs to change. And that's what I'm going to talk about. And that's the angle that this video is going to be about. Now, I'm not going to go over all of the news because I'm sure a lot of you guys already know, but a quick summary for those that don't. CentOS 8 is going away in 2021. Um, and CentOS as we know it is going away. Now, for those of you that don't already know, CentOS has long and always been a free alternative to Red Hat Enterprise Linux. And Red Hat is actually the distribution that I started with. Uh, they actually had a desktop distribution a long time ago that later, you know, Fedora replaced. Um, and now we have Red Hat Enterprise Linux, which you do need to pay for if you want to use that. You need, you actually need to pay for that. Um, you get support, which is great. And I, I don't want to, um, you know, throw shade on Red Hat. You know, it's a great distribution. But for those that either A, don't want to pay for it, or B, want a test server, and you know want to spin up a test server uh, they would use CentOS for that because CentOS is the free alternative to Red Hat it's basically a recompile of Red Hat without the branding because if you take the branding out you don't have to um, you know you don't you don't have to charge for it um, you, you basically can just take something fork it and put it back in the community which you could do with anything and then in 2014 Red Hat acquired CentOS and everyone then was like what does this mean what's gonna to happen to CentOS well nothing well at least not then and then when IBM acquired Red Hat, the same question came up. What's going to happen to CentOS and also what's going to happen to Red Hat? Um, so basically what's happening is that um, CentOS Stream, which is a rolling distribution, is going to be the only CentOS for, for the most part. There's still going to be CentOS 7 that will be supported for a long time. CentOS 8, which was supposed to be, re you know, that was supposed to be supported for a long time. It's not going to be. So that's going to go away. And that's a big problem um, that we're going to talk about. And CentOS Stream is going to be the only thing left at the end of all this. We'll have an overlap with CentOS 7 that will still have support. But CentOS Stream is going to be the new thing. And CentOS Stream is intended to be a preview for what's coming in Red Hat. A development branch, if you will. But they're kind of careful to call it that because um, I guess they want people to use it. Um, so that's basically what's happening is CentOS Stream, the rolling distribution, will be the only CentOS. And then CentOS, as we know it, which is a, you know, a free alternative or a clone of Red Hat, but, but it's free, that's, that's going to be gone. So if you want Red Hat for free, well, no, you're not going to be able to have that. Well, you'll be able to have CentOS 7, but, you know, people generally want something that's a little newer than that. Okay, so what's my opinion on all this? I know a lot of you guys are surprised, angry, feeling betrayed, or at least annoyed by this, right? Um, I don't think anybody is like, yes, this is the greatest thing ever. I don't think anybody's saying that, except for maybe the executives. Um, the, the truth of the matter is I'm not surprised because companies will do what companies do. You know, I kind of thought that IBM would have done this a long time ago, but they didn't. When they acquired Red Hat, I thought, yeah, in a couple months, they'll, they'll do what they do. What companies do, they do what they want to do. That, that's, how it all, that's how it all happens. That's basically how it all, always goes is that companies do what they do. And I don't feel that we should always trust big companies because it's not that they're just out to hurt us all. They're basically out to make money. And if they find that the current thing isn't working, they go a different direction. And especially in an acquisition. Acquisitions almost always cause bit you know big change to happen and i think the only thing surprising to me is that this didn't happen sooner i thought it would happen for sure but it didn't until now so while i think that it's not surprising it's still big news because this affects a lot of people a lot of people rely on centos i think the most egregious thing here was that 
when CentOS 8 came out, um, you know, everyone that downloaded it was told it's going to have security updates until, you know, I don't remember what the date was. It's not true now. They're going back on that. I mean, that's what's egregious. If you tell someone this product that we're putting out there, whether it costs money or it's free, doesn't matter. Um, it's going to be supported until, and then you put an end date on it. And then later on you say, oh, no, 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 we're, we're not going to, we're just going to stop supporting it. Um, it. It's done. That's, that's horrible. That is doing a major, major disservice to companies all over the world that rely on the software. Um, if you don't think you're going to support it for as long as you say you're going to, then don't, you know, don't say it. Just, just say it'll be supported for a year. I don't know. Um, and I'm sure they didn't know about the decision because in a company, the executives know what's going to happen. They, they just talked about it. They have board meetings and secret rooms and they hash this stuff out. And the, the employees don't know that, that this is going to happen. But this does require a shift in mindset, like I mentioned earlier. And the shift should happen at the companies because the number one rule of business is don't piss off your customers. Bottom line, that's the number one rule of business. And companies consistently break it because they know you rely on their software. So, we, you know, they'll say, we don't care. Just this is the way you need to go if you want to use our stuff. It's not nice. It's just the way companies are. I don't like it. Now, when I say shift in mindset, they're never going to shift their mindset. It would take all of their customers leaving in droves and their shares plummet. The finances just go down the toilet. Then, yeah, they're, oh, we're so sorry. Yeah, we're not going to do that again. That's when change happens. So we can push that change by boycotting CentOS, but um, I don't think enough people will. That, that's the problem. I don't think enough people will boycott Red Hat. I just don't think that's going to happen. Um, it, it could, but I don't see it happening. People are going to complain. They're going to be angry. Then they're going to pay. They're going to pay for Red Hat. So I think the shift in mindset needs to happen on, on our end, on the Linux user side, on the Linux administrator side. We need to be um, cautious anytime there's a company involved. Now, full disclaimer, I use Ubuntu on all of my servers and Pop! OS on all my laptops. So you could say, I'm all in on Ubuntu and Pop! OS. So you could also say, hypothetically, that my entire operation depends on Canonical, the makers of Ubuntu, because they are the company that created Ubuntu, and if they make a decision like this, and it could happen, then um, that's going to be bad for me. That That's what some people might think, but it's not true. Because there's a reason why all of my Ansible configurations support Debian, Ubuntu, Pop! OS, Arch, and Manjaro. But I don't use most of those. I only use Ubuntu and Pop! OS. So why would I maintain all these other distributions in my Ansible config? This is the reason. This whole situation right here with, um, you know, with IBM and their decision to change CentOS. If I was reliant on CentOS, then I would need to shift to something else. And that's hard to do at a company. Um, you can't just, oh yeah, I'll just uh, shift all of our servers to Debian tomorrow. No, you're not. It's, it's a huge thing. So this is why I maintain multiple distributions because I really enjoy Ubuntu. It's my favorite distribution and Pop! OS is my favorite desktop distribution. I know some people, you know, they really like to hate on Ubuntu. I don't feel like, like the criticism is fair. I really don't. Um, that's not to say that Canonical doesn't make bad decisions sometimes, but I don't think anything that they've done is as egregious as people make it out to be. The fact is, though, Canonical could make a decision that, you know, I'm just not on board with. It's not okay. I don't want to use Ubuntu anymore after a decision they make. That could happen. And for me, it's no inconvenience at all whatsoever. Here's why. Because I'll just use something else. I'll wipe every computer. And and if, if Canonical does something that I don't agree with, I will, I will wipe every computer and server and shift it to something else. I already have the tooling. My Ansible configs already support all these other distros. So whether I have Debian installed on this laptop right here, or Ubuntu, Arch, Manjaro, doesn't matter, the end result is always the same. I, I've actually just made my Ansible configs public, so you could check it out yourself. Um, the end result's the same for me. Um, it doesn't matter. I could just shift to something else. And that's the shift we need, is to... Always use cross-platform tooling. Always have a plan B. And I've always said to people, don't use platform-specific tools. An example of that is in AWS. You know, lots of people use that, right? So 
OpsWorks is a configuration management solution in AWS, but it only supports AWS. So if you use it, then that means if you ever stop using you know, AWS, then you have to learn new tooling. You have to build it all from scratch again. That's what you have to do. And you know, Amazon could make a boneheaded decision. I think that's actually very likely. Um, Amazon does make bad decisions, probably more than a lot of companies, but they could do that. And if they do, and you rely on OpsWorks, their configuration management solution and other of their utilities, you're going to have a hard time. And it's not a matter of when, or it's not a matter of, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. And if you use a cross-platform tool like Ansible, for example, that supports many platforms, it has minimal impact on you. And this is why I tell everyone, never, ever use a tool that is for one platform. Never use OpsWorks. Just ban it. Get rid of it. Um, I, I hate to, I'm not trying to um, insult anyone here. Don't get me wrong. Um, but don't use it. It's anything that requires a particular platform. If it requires Google Cloud it, to run, if it requires Azure to run, AWS to run, get rid of it. If you are all in on one distribution, you're doing it wrong. Because if CentOS and this whole thing isn't affecting you because your company doesn't use CentOS, you're not off the hook because what you use might be next. So like I build all of my tooling to support multiple distributions, you should do the same. Have a plan B, have a test server, and have your configuration management solution hit that test server with a different distro on it. Just to make sure that you could reproduce the same product. Even Pop! OS isn't all in on Ubuntu. I mean, they are now, yes. But I've talked to the developers there a lot. And they also maintain, um, I don't know if they maintain, but they're always testing things in Debian. And they even told me if Canonical makes a decision that they don't like, they'll go to Debian or maybe something else. Maybe that's changed, but they'll go to something else. So they're not married to Canonical. They're not like glued to canonical they might be all in on it right now as i am all my servers run it they can move to something else and they will if something happens that's the mindset that we need we need to not trust that the distribution that we are using today is always going to be as it is today because they can make a decision even community projects can make a decision debian can make a decision that um, impacts you that in a negative way and if that happens then you'll need to shift to something else. Um, how easy or hard will that be for you? The correct answer is, it's not hard at all because I'll just shift my things over. I mean, let's be honest, it is a little bit of inconvenience because if I have to redo all my servers, I mean, it, you could say that's an inconvenience, but um, all my tooling is already there. All I have to do is dump the database, import it, done. Honestly, that's it. I don't have to do much. And I think it's fun. You know, in the back of my mind, I'm like, man, I kind of hope that happens so I, I have a project to work on. Because then I'll create a video about it. Here's how you move from this distribution to another. And if CentOS was my distro of choice, I'd be moving to something else right now. And I'd be making videos about that. Um, since I don't maintain CentOS servers, then I can't do that, really. Um, but I guarantee you, if Ubuntu goes in a direction I can't follow, I'm going to shift. That's the shift we need. We need to never be all in on any one distribution. We always need to be maintaining a plan B. We need to be looking at the future because don't think that whatever distro you are using today, whatever your solution is today is going to be here tomorrow. It might not be. And if you are a company that relies on this, then you especially need to take advantage of having something else to, um, you know, potentially base your products on. That's very important. And I think the worst part about all this is that you know, like I mentioned earlier, CentOS 8 was promised with a certain amount of support. And companies have built their servers and their infrastructure, you know, relying on this. And now they're told, nah, we're not doing that no more. Sorry, go do something else. You know, you, you guys are getting the stuff for free. We don't care about you. Just use CentOS Stream or just go somewhere else. That's what they're being told. For their dedication of using CentOS on their servers, that's what they're being told. Now, now again... Um, I, I don't want to throw shade on developers of CentOS. They're brilliant people. I don't think they want this to happen. I don't think they want this drama. They don't. And I think they take passion in what they do. Everyone does. It works on a Linux distribution. But the reality is, if you are all in on one thing, this is the kind of thing that can happen. I'm not trying to say shame on you guys for being all in. I'm just letting you guys know my opinion, which is um, 
always have a plan B and always have an alternative. And it's not even Linux specific. I don't even care if you're all Windows, have something else to um, fall back on. It's a very important thing at all companies to be able to pivot. Successful companies pivot. Unsuccessful companies that are all in on one thing, they will eventually get bit by karma. It's just the way it works. So um, I know this, these opinions might not be popular with everyone, but I think at the end of the day, if you use cross-platform tools and never use a platform-specific tool as much as you can help it, so you can take your tooling and point it to any distro, any platform, that's a superpower, and that's what's going to give you resilience and your company resilience. And then these types of things won't matter as much to you. And I know a lot of you guys out there, you're really struck by this. If you think about it, um, it's, it's one thing for us IT people to be up all night because there's a, a launch. We knew about a launch. We knew about a product we we're pushing out and, you know, we work extra hours for it. But I can't, I can guarantee you that there's a bunch of IT companies out there that right now, as I'm recording this video, probably hundreds or thousands of companies right now are in a meeting room with their IT staff who are stressed out. We have a pandemic and maybe they're in a virtual meeting room, whatever. And now they have to shift suddenly. And every single IT employee is stressed in that company, in each of these companies. Right now, it's happening as I talk to you guys. And uh, maybe some of you guys watching this video just came out of the meeting room, okay? It's a big deal. But I think what we have to understand is, um, you know, as Fox Mulder would say in the X-Files, trust no one. Always assume the best of intentions and kindness and everything, but just um, always have a plan B. That's very important. So um, I know this is long-winded. Sorry, this was unscripted. I just wanted to get my opinion out there, and now I've done that. So thank you so much, guys, for listening to me You know, talk about this. I hope it was of value to you guys and if that it's inspired you to change if you haven't already done so and go towards... Um, other solutions, other tooling, you know, cross-platform tooling and make changes in your infrastructure or even just your house if you use Linux to easily shift to something else should the day come. Because if CentOS didn't get you, something else will. And who knows, maybe we'll be talking about um, Canonical next. Maybe Debian will do something that people don't like. Maybe OpenSUSE will be sold to someone else and they will just close it out. I hope that doesn't happen. I, I'm not trying to worry you guys, but I kind of am. Gotta be ready for the next thing. So anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. I have some awesome content coming and I'll see you again real soon.